Hello, welcome to Wall Yin Yoga or Yin Yoga at the Wall. And I'm excited to present this class to you. So I hope that this practice will give you a different spin on some of the postures that we do in yin yoga class. And it might even be a little bit more accessible to some of you. I'll also give you a few tips as we get going on how to use the wall to practice other poses that you might do in other yoga classes as well, or at least when you're training at home with personal practice as walls in the studio are not always available to you. So without further ado, we'll get started. So from here, let's just have a comfortable seat, whatever that looks like for you. And I'm just gonna close my eyes and I'm just gonna center into my practice for a little bit here. Just taking some nice big deep breaths. From here, big inhale, arms up overhead, touching palms together, exhale, hands and hearts. In. Creating an intention for your practice, what would you like to give or receive? Maybe you'd like to dedicate this practice to someone or something. This being a wall practice, um, maybe even a little bit of self-care. Let's dedicate it to ourselves. And then once you have that set, we'll release the hands back down. Let's go ahead and get into a child's pose real quick. Um, just to continue to get into the rhythm of our practice. So, and then I think I forgot to say props. We're just going to use a couple blocks, maybe a blanket or two, um, may not even be that much. So I'm just going to turn to the side here. We're going to be here for a couple minutes. So remember for child's pose, you can have knees together, maybe out wide, somewhere in between. Good, and I'm just gonna take my arms long in front of me. You can always support the center part of the body if you need that. And I'm just gonna breathe and expand here. Coming back to my intention and just focusing on the breath. Remember, like in every yin pose, we're engaged. So we're zipping up from the pubic bone to behind the navel, or belly button into the spine. Expand that rib cage on the inhale. Let's do for here, carefully come out of there. Good. And then from here, I'm just gonna come up and I'm just gonna just round here into a nice cat pose. And then come out. Okay, so coming to the wall, the hardest part of wall yoga, anything at the wall, especially when you're on the floor, is getting into position. That's the hardest part, I promise. So um, also be advised, I've got a mirror behind this tapestry here. And so um, I'm gonna be very careful where I put my feet or how hard I put my feet, but I'm gonna recommend coming as close as you can to the wall and bending your knees. 
And then once you're ready, you can just kind of carefully come down and then one leg at a time coming up there and then just getting yourself in space. You do not have to have your tailbone and your rear end completely touching the wall. You can actually be out a little bit away from there. It's a matter of playing with things and finding the placement that your body needs in that moment. So once we have our legs up here, we're gonna simulate a wall version of a wide-legged seated forward fold. So remember, which is gonna look like that. So remember, just like when we're seated, if both legs out at the same time is too much for you, you can always take one leg in at a time and modify that. And then when I say halfway, then you'll just switch over to the other side. I'm gonna do the full here. And just like any other yin pose, you wanna kind of ease into it. So I don't wanna just hang out here and then you know, just let my legs do whatever. I'm gonna cradle them here with my blocks. Now I'm gonna hold my blocks into place once we get there because these blocks will fly. But we're gonna be here for about three minutes. I'm just kind of holding my blocks there. And then as you become more open and more comfortable, you can let props and things like that go. This is the best part for me. And then you just breathe. And try to sink into the stillness of this pose here. So the benefits of this is this takes it all out of the back. It takes it a bit out of the hamstrings and puts it into the inner thigh. So after this practice, try this seated and notice the differences. So we're coming up on the halfway point. So if you need to change sides or make an adjustment here, this is where you would do that. And just like other poses, your body will let you know when it's ready to sink deeper. Connect with intention. Good. And so then from here, as you're ready, take your hands on the outside of the legs and just kind of incrementally work those legs back up. Just kind of support yourself. Good. And then you can bend in those knees. Once you've bend in the knees, you can do a little windshield wiper from side to side here. Feet are on the wall. Good. So we'll do cobbler's pose here at the wall. So this one, we're gonna take the soles of the feet together. And this might be where you start and then over time, the heels just kind of 
drop down when they're ready. But you'll think about opening the knees up a little bit here as well. So when we're ready, we'll be here for three minutes. And just like traditional yin, if you need to come out of something early, listen to your body and do that. And as you settle in, your body will let you know when it wants to or when it's safe to drop in deeper. Relax to the hips, relax to the chest and the shoulders, relax that belly. From here, when you're ready, carefully take the hands behind the knees, kind of guide them back in. Feet are gonna come back to the wall. Get them again. You can do a little windshield wiper here. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go into an assisted plow pose from here. And I do apologize from the angle that you're going to see this from the camera, um, but this is the best way to show it to you. So taking the feet here, good. You're going to press your feet into the wall. You're going to lift up your hips. Now, this is also a nice way to just kind of lift and lower a little bit um, as kind of a non-traditional bridge. But I'm going to lift all the way up, and then I'm going to take my feet up a little higher. So now I've got my lift. I'm gonna take my hands behind my hips, lifting one leg at a time, good. and then coming over. So maybe the toes touch, maybe they don't. So I actually come into this pose a lot easier and better form when I'm at the wall versus trying to use momentum. But this is your plow, your snail pose, and we'll be right here for a few moments as well. If you need to come out early, come out early. And just like everything else, you know, you want to stay the weight in the shoulders, not the neck. So if you feel that bone at the base of the neck popping out, then you know you've gone too far. 
Now my feet are touching the ground. I could release my hands from the back of my low back and take my arms long behind me. But for comfort, I'm just gonna keep it right here. As we're here, if you want to take this a little bit differently, you can come to the ear pressure pose, bending the knees by the ears. It's another variation. Press the shoulders into the mat or the floor. We got one minute, just checking there. Starting to build a little heat here, you might be too. Since I am, if you are, then we'll just assume that that's normal. Good, so from here to come out, we lift one leg at a time, kind of bend it towards that foot, towards the wall, let it come to the wall. The other leg will come out and come to the wall and then carefully lower yourself out of there. Good work, bring the knees into the chest, rock, rock side to side. Let's take head and neck from side to side. Good. So this is also a way to practice shoulder stand. Um, if you have trouble getting up um, in a normal class, um, you can practice that here. I'll just show you that real quick. Good. So you can come right here in your shoulder stand. Good. And then that's how it will work. Okay. So from here, let's come into a twist at the wall. So I'm just going to take my feet together. They're right in front of me. And I'm just gonna walk those feet over to my right. And I'm gonna take both arms out to the side. Good. And we'll be here for three minutes. Try to keep both shoulders grounded. Breathe and expand the rib cage.
Good, so from here, head will come back to center. Good, now you're gonna take your feet up against the wall and you're just gonna carefully walk them back to center. When you come back to center, get that little wiggle wiggle. And we're gonna take that over to the other side. So just whenever you're ready, you know, we'll just walk those feet and legs over to the other side. Stacking the feet, shoulders grounded, looking to the right, and we'll be right here. Maybe, there we go. And breathe and expand. Good, head back to center. Again, carefully walk your feet back to center and do a little wiggle wiggle here. So before we come to our final pose, let's get a nice version of a figure four or a pigeon here. So we've done this before in regular yin, but I like this at the wall a lot better because it takes it out of the hip flexors sometimes. So I'm gonna take my left leg long here. I'm gonna cross my right ankle. I'm gonna take it right above that knee. Now, again, just like anything else, this might be enough for some people and you can do some light pressure into that right thigh. Others, you're gonna deepen this. The lower, the more you bend that right knee, that's wrong. The more you bend the left knee and let that left foot settle down, the deeper that leg is gonna come into the chest and the deeper you get into this hip. So you are 100% in control. So to lessen it, just take that foot up. To deepen it, that foot comes down. Good, and we'll be here for three minutes as well. I need a new timer. There we go, okay. My kitchen timer is not cutting it anymore, okay. 
So just breathe through there. Keep some flexion in this right foot. So that just means you're taking the toes in the direction of the knee. And just like with belly down pigeon, if you feel pain, numbness, tingling, burning, any kind of sensation like that, you want to back off until you do not. If you're someone watching and you're thinking, well, I can do all of those things, but I can't get down into the floor right now. Well, you can do these in your bed or a hotel room bed. You just use the wall up against your bed or your headboard as your wall. So you'll take your uh, rear end, you know, towards the headboard of your bed. And then you can do all of these practices right there and you don't have to get down on the floor. Right, so from here, good. Just take that left foot that's on the wall, just walk it up your wall. So you can gently release out of here. Good, and then carefully undo. Just let that right leg be long for a moment. And if you need to kind of take it from one side into the other, you can do that. Okay, taking that into the other side now. So your right leg is up against the wall. Good, you're gonna bend the left knee. That left ankle is gonna come right up above that right knee. And then you're in charge. So maybe you just walk that right foot down a little bit, maybe not so much. Good, and you just be where you need to be. Again, feet are in flexion, so toes are towards that knee. And we'll be right here for three minutes. And just a reminder, you can zip up from pubic bone to behind the navel. Rolling shoulders back, breathe and expand. Coming to that intention again.
Good, so there's that. Good, so remember to come out of here. Just let that right foot come up the wall and then carefully undo. Good, and then if you need to just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle that leg around, let your body do that. As we come into our final pose, um, I hope this has been a grounding experience for you. Um, sometimes when my tailbone is more grounded at the wall, it's a more grounding um, practice. So this is legs up the wall, and this is where we're going to do Shavasana today. So basically, your legs are just up against the wall. There's a couple things um, you can do here. Sometimes I like a little bit more grounding by placing a blank folded blanket right across the hips. Sometimes that feels really good. Sometimes I like to have this as a little bit of a neck pillow back here, which is what I'm gonna do today. And then my other blanket, I'm gonna use as a little weight on my feet. So that facilitates a little bit more grounding action. You can also put a bolster cushion up there and this is optional. You don't have to um, have anything here. Um, I don't recommend any hard objects just in case it falls that you don't hurt yourself. But basically I'm balancing that on my feet and then I'm just letting my legs rest right up against the wall and then rolling my shoulders back, just settling in here to my heart space because this is our final pose. I'm gonna leave you here for Shavasana. So I hope that you had an amazing practice here. Not a, too long of a practice, um, but a good grounding practice. And I hope to see you again soon. Namaste.